Here is a simple prompt to create a delicious steak dinner. And here's another prompt just so I can say, I'm Batman. My point is you don't need a graphic novel to get amazing images on Playground. Today we're gonna cover building your prompt to get the image you want. And we'll also talk about some keywords to generate certain styles for your images. For starters, a prompt is simply a descriptive text describing what it is you wanna create. When I'm building my prompts, I tend to follow a simple formula. You have your subject, your background or environment, and some sort of action. On Canvas, your prompt box is just below the generation frame here in gray. So let's say we wanna create a cinematic film still of the Joker in jail giving you a thumbs up. So in the prompt, we'll simply put the Joker sitting in jail giving a thumbs up. The settings we're gonna use is a width of 640 and a height of 832. Prompt guidance will leave it at seven. Quality and details at 40. We'll generate four images in the sampler. I like to use either Euler or Euler Ancestral or DPM2. Those are my personal go-tos, but you could experiment with whichever sampler you like. Okay, so taking a look at the generated images, we see we do have the Joker giving us a thumbs up, which is great, but it's got this comic cartoony feel to it. And that's expected because we put a very general term and the AI gave us what it thought we wanted. To build a prompt, we need to add what's known as modifiers. And these are just supporting words to further enhance the look of your image. In most scenarios, what I do is I think of the style and I'll put it at the front of the prompt. In this case, we're gonna add cinematic film still. As I generate the images, you're gonna see that even just these few words are already gonna change the look of the image. So we see on the first and the fourth image that it's starting to look more photorealistic and less like a comic drawing, even though we got a couple results here that are still lacking in photorealism. We just need to add a few more supporting words to further enhance that look. But before we do that, I wanna introduce you to something that's known as negative prompts. On the left panel here, you see there's a section that says exclude from image. And basically what this is, is that you want to put in words that you don't wanna see in the image. And I often like to think, what is the opposite of what I wanna see? For example, I'm gonna put in anime, cartoon, graphic, text, painting, crayon. I will point out though, this is not a guarantee that you're not gonna see those types of images, but it does help minimize unwanted results. To further emphasize the cinematic look, think of supporting words that relate to that. So we can put in words like Hollywood movie, cinemascope, film grain or grainy to get that analog feel. And if you like that blurry type of background, you can put in shallow depth of field, moody or dimly lit to get that very dramatic look. And for fine details, you can use words like highly detailed, intricately detailed. That tends to work fairly well for most prompts. Let's generate these four and see what we come up with. Taking a look at the images, you see now we have more of a photorealistic look. It no longer looks like a drawing or a sketch. And we have a prompt to work with. Now that you have a good basis, the other option is to utilize the filters. Let's go into the filter menu here and we're going to select realistic vision, generate four images. This is one of the filters that I like to use for photorealism and it'll further enhance your prompt, but in a slightly different style. If we compare the results, you see that they're both cinematic looking, but have their own specific styles. For these images, I took the same concept and applied food photography style in the front of the prompt. And for the main body of the prompt, I just described steak on a plate, rustic restaurant, and some supporting modifiers. Here's some examples of using abstract expressionism along with some supporting modifier words to get sort of this artistic feel. So as you can see, it doesn't really take a lot to generate various different styles. Just think logically of that style you want, put it in the front and think of some supporting words. It's really as simple as that. Now, some of you in the comments have said that playground can't do line art. To you, I say hogwash. <laughs> in fact, it's fairly simple to get these type of results. 
at the front of the prompt, all I do is put line art drawing, describe a squirrel eating acorns in a park. I may put words like vector graphics, minimalist, so that it's not too detailed, but clearly it can be done fairly easily. Now, because I appreciate you all so much, I'm gonna include a Google Doc in the description below with a whole long list of different styles that you can play around with. So you would just copy the prompt from the start of the quotes, but you don't need to keep the quotations in there. And where it says NEG colon, those are the negative prompts to put in the exclude from image area. Now, if you're anything like me and you love to experiment and try different things, this is where Canvas comes in really handy. When I'm looking for a specific look, I'll generate four images to start with without any filters, just to see the style. This prompt is a biomechanical cyberpunk style. I quite like the look of it, but maybe I want to grunge it up a bit. So I would choose something like Neon Mecha and run it with the same prompt. And you'll notice as this generates, the generation frame will move down and it'll create this nice little grid for you. So I could keep doing this with different filters, different styles. Let's do one more with RPG. RPG is great for armor and robots. So you can clearly see the differences of the styles and really just pick one to work with. Theoretically, the canvas is practically infinite, so you can create grids upon grids. If you drag all of them and select them all, you can move them around and organize them. Perhaps you're doing robots on one side. So I'm gonna grab this batch and put it together here. And you'll also notice when I line things up, see the red lines there? That's there to help you with alignment. So if I were to move around here and let's say I accidentally knock this over, I can just grab this and you see the red lines immediately guide me to line them up with both the top image and the images on the side just to keep things nice and tidy. So again, this is a great way to get organized, to experiment with different looks, different filters. Maybe you're changing prompts slightly, utilizing seeds, which we talked about in the first video. But as I show you more examples on the screen, I encourage you to take these prompts, build your own, change the words slightly, add some more modifying words that will enhance your style. And if there's certain artist styles that you like or even artist names, you could throw those in there to really transform the images you create. Now, in case you don't know, we do have a Discord. I'd love for you guys to come over and show us your work. Link will be in the description below. Until the next video, my friends, this is Playground.